Hello everyone, my name is Ash. At the press conference for EA, Bioware revealed a new video covering Mass Effect Andromeda. Their plans for the game, the path they've taken in creating its story, and the new stills and video rendered in the Frostbite engine. If you have not seen the trailer, I highly advise that you check out the link in the description and watch it before proceeding with this video. In order to frame this breakdown properly, I will make three assumptions right at the start. Number one, the woman at the end is our protagonist. Number two, the Tempest is our personal ship. And number three, the big ship is called the Ark. If you watched my trailer breakdown last year, you know that I believe in the Ark theory where humanity escaped on these massive ships from the Reapers. But in general, for the purposes of this video, I will merely call the ship the Ark. Let's get started. The first few shots are real-life examples of space exploration. The first shot is from the SpaceX successful Falcon 9 launch. The latter is footage of the Aurora Borealis from NASA. It really sets up the idea that space exploration is in everyone's hands, not just the government, but also the free thinkers who want to explore the galaxies on their own dime. What produces from these journeys into space research? Enter the new ship, the Tempest. It looks so much like the Normandy in its shape, but based on what we see later in this trailer, it definitely has an overhaul. Considering it took Cerberus approximately 2.5 trillion credits to replicate the Normandy, it's likely that this is a government-endorsed ship, or possibly another joint project, just like the original Normandy was between the humans and Turians, but with another race or government. The video shifts into a more dev diary-esque content, where we see Bioware hard at work on the game itself. One dev works on concept art depicting a humanoid character at the helm of a navigation system and at the helm and is pretty much on autopilot, possibly through a VI or AI. Although there seems to be staff on board, the Solarian on the right and the Krogan on the left, possibly our companions or part of the crew. Now, in my opinion, this shot is the biggest piece of meta out of the entire trailer. On the surface, it's just a huge tornado on the left, a massive sandstorm on the right, and the tempest just comes through the center of it. But by definition, a tempest is a storm, a gale, a violent disturbance. This specific shot seems to be a pivotal point. There are two different conflicts in Andromeda coming to a head, and then the tempest, in other words humanity, cuts in with its own drama right at the center. In other words, while our character may have troubles of their own, we're thrusting ourselves into the middle of two forces that are already at each other's throats. One is centered towards itself, and the other one wants to take over the other. It may be too metaphoric, but you will notice the very forceful calls and vivid imagery on storms and lightning throughout this entire trailer. The next shot includes four panels of the same environment with different tonalities. One is bright and cheerful, while the other looks like it's ravaged by a sandstorm. Throughout the trailer, it becomes more apparent that weather will have some impact on the environments players will see before their very own eyes, just like the huge tornado and sandstorm from earlier. There's no clear indication that this will be dynamic weather, but it may impose on gameplay. So just like the hazard maps that were added to Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, the hazard rain that would burn and tear through your armor, the reaper bees in the station, or the sandstorms that would reduce visibility to zero. Now, I don't know what is up with Bioware and their floating rocks, like this one in the sky in the back, or the ones in the Fade for Dragon Age, but they're always tied to some foreign, ancient technology or magic hoo-ha, so I'm inclined to believe that we will see artifacts of some kind on the go during our travels throughout the game tied to these structures. Literally. Notice anything pretty in this shot? Me either. Because you can see the dirt and sand that's actually built up on the N7 armor. But also while we're at it, please keep track of the armor differences for this character and the next. Because we see a human, our human, all clad in white armor. 
but this is not N7 armor, as there's a G2 in the back and spoilers, the letter A on multiple parts of the armor, shoulders, helmet, etc. The gameplay seems to share the same animations and feel as its predecessors, especially with the ammo reloading animation. However, notice that we're watching over our left shoulder, then our right. It seems stance changes are possible now. As far as the enemy, it honestly looks like a cross between a gorilla and a darkspawn, as we defend ourselves in the middle of a settlement. It is bulky and partially armored, especially around its arms and hands, and has ridiculously sharp teeth. Now the reason why I bring up Darkspawn is because this enemy is so freaking alike to the Darkspawn Genlock Brutes. And later on in this trailer, you'll see one that looks way too close to a Pride Demon. Like, straight up. We always joke about how close the games are and possibly in the same universe. Like the dragon armor in Mass Effect 3 or the Krogan heads in the Orlesian Chateaus. But it's starting to get really scary with the likeness. We see the first close-up of the character in Mass Effect, an Asari, who is definitely an important NPC. Reason why I say this is because Bioware has afforded by-hand facial animations for her character. Her skin has a very light blue thing going on at the top and the purple for the rest, but she masks her eyes in maroon paint. Now, while there are Asari who have natural markings for their skin, which looks like what this Asari has with the blue lines that streak up on her head, I am inclined to believe that her red is her own doing. She goes from a seemingly genuine smile, despite her bloodshot green eyes, to a disheartened, oh, face, as a weapon is put to her head. Something I did and totally did not want to draw attention to, however, is if you look at the orange background behind her that has a field of static electricity and a mist that is all too reminiscent of the collector pods of Mass Effect 2. And hopefully I'm wrong, because that means something else is trying to consume genetic data for their own use. Moving on. Location here is the same from the trailer of last year's E3, with the mysterious stretchers bursting out of the ground. These stretchers may be big indicators or even for even more massive buildings or perhaps civilizations that were built underground to avoid these sandstorms and hazardous weather. Here we see the protagonist that is all clad in white armor from before. Not the N7 character with dark armor. It may be a bit strong, but the contrast of your character being the white knight and the N7 character being the dark knight is being pointed out very strongly and shift into another landscape where the Tempest is actually touched down at some settlement within the desert. I think personally, this is somewhere we can actually call home. The settlement is being protected by a surrounding gap. The Tempest can sit here, no problem. And the character's helmet is off, so the air is breathable. In Dragon Age Inquisition, we had the ability to gain camps and strongholds by defeating enemies in the area. I think Bioware will continue that in Andromeda. A world where you have action over the environments and you can stake your claim. But instead of a country like Ferelden or LA, we're taking this scale on different worlds. A human and a Krogan in the wreckage of a freshly downed ship. Now I have something very specific to say about this towards the end of the video, so please keep this still fresh in your mind. The biotic punch to the ground. It looks like Bioware is busy to get new animations for different moves, including the re-implementation of biotics and harnessing dark energy. Nothing seems changed otherwise to the appearance of biotics. It's still a lot of purple. I think the main thing after seeing this move, however, is the hopeful opportunity to use biotics for other means than just killing people. Like floating. Jetpacks are cool too, and possibly grappling hooks if they borrow it from Titanfall, but it looks like Bioware is adding much more maneuverability with exploration, as they make noticeable gameplay changes from Mass 3 to Andromeda. Especially with the obvious re-implementation of drivable Makos, which looks super cool by the way. Now the character on the right screen looks human, and you can visibly see their face through the helmet, but the cool part here 
is that the Tempest is touched down in the distance. It only confirms the idea of an enclosed, somewhat open world space for us to explore. Now, here's the Dragon Age-like enemy I mentioned previously. Angry, angry big guy with lots of teeth. The scene reminds me of a quick time event to spam A when a husk jumps on top of you during multiplayer for Mass Effect 3. I'm pretty convinced that the multiplayer has influenced actual gameplay greatly. The first being the hazard maps that would inflict damage on you, the burning rain and low visibility storms, and now the quick time events to kill the monster that grabs you. Not only is it implemented into Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, but it was also in Dragon Age Inquisition for the Descent DLC with the ogres that picked you up. The point, however, is that if you look, the enemy has green essence floating out of its body. Other than that, it's part of the fade or something like that for an explanation. There may be something in the water that affects enemies. The difference in red body and green insides is a little bit too strong to be normal. And seriously, pride demon, come on. When this first came out, I thought it was a thresher mall, but upon closer look, it definitely is a ship or a floating object at the very least. Metal, stark edges. It specifically slows down as it reaches the top. The next, the protagonist who's definitely a woman in that armor, considering the small frame. The same G2 designation on the back with a letter A visibly showing on the right shoulder and the helmet, as well as a darker female agent running behind and a Krogan to the side. It's with this shot, as well as other instances we've seen this character, that I have to say that our character is not N7 at all. It's possible that they not only are not part of the program, but they're an agent of an organization similar to what Miranda Lawson had to do, and a shift to a character being dropped off a cliff by a Krogan brute with a human who has either spent time taunting or interrogating this other human. But if you pay attention to his face while he's falling, you can see there are facial animations deliberately given for this one as he starts screaming upon release. Some may have seen this character before, and if you're interested in more uh, in-depth explanations, you can read below in the description on who this guy allegedly is. There's a mix of battlecruisers and civilian shuttles in space, but as the shuttles move away from Earth, or whatever oxygen-filled world this is, I want to take the time to point out an important detail. There is more than one arc. And in the N7 trailer, we only saw one make it whole to Andromeda. But I will come back to that later. I'll come back to that later. But there is one on the top left and one on the bottom right. Where are they? I'll bring it up very shortly. And now, our protagonist. Allegedly. The environment she's in is pure dark and in low power, as made obvious by the red light. She makes a very audible hard breath, something so stupidly similar to the end of Shepard in Mass Effect 3's Destroy ending. But she rises up to a room with other stasis pods. She's the first to wake up. Looking hard into it, her makeup is still there, and she has a very simple garb on that is an armor. It's definitely worn in, though, with dirt all over. It's been a while since she went to sleep, or at least she was in battle before she laid down. And if you pay attention hard enough, her hair moves. The game uses something similar to NVIDIA's Hairworks or AMD's Tress effects in order to make the hair move more dynamically. The angle here, though, is pretty curious because of the halo that is subtly outlined above her head. It could mean many things. She's a saint, a spearhead for the things to come, a martyr in the making, or all three. Or none of it. Now that we've gone through everything, let's tie it all together with the script the narrator says. It's pretty straightforward to describing what Andromeda is all about. It's a human story built on the idea that we're all pathfinders looking to keep our species alive. There are very strong keywords and phrases here, like survival, build a home, build a new home for humanity, alien life and civilizations, whole new galaxies to explore. 
The first two tie in with each other, survival and building a new home for humanity. These two imply that humanity has lost its original home, or Earth. The alien life and civilizations. We are going to meet and communicate with new civilizations and new races. And this brings up many interesting points. Will they see our coming with positivity? Or will it turn into another first contact war where we were threatened just as the Turians were? Are there hostile factions right off the bat? Can we make alliances in the game? Or are they already predestinated? It can go either way. It could be the standard way, the same way that we had in Mass 2 to Mass 3, where we had to choose between the Geth, the Quarians, both, or just ruining everything. <laughs> A whole new galaxy to explore. Considering that the Tempest was able to land on different planets within this trailer, it appears that we'll have something similar to Dragon Age Inquisition. Not completely open world, however, we will have the ability to explore on foot or via the Mako for all of the different environments and worlds. We will take the Tempest and the Ark to Andromeda to start anew. However, do you remember that shot of the three Arcs I mentioned? In the N7 Day trailer, only one arc made it to Andromeda. And with the last line that was said, we made it. I imagine the projections of surviving the feat was not 100%. I'm inclined to believe that only a few, or more likely one arc, actually made it through the trip, and the others will suffer the consequences on migrating to Andromeda. I think the main objective here is this. The Ark spent so much energy transporting everyone on board from the Milky Way to the Andromeda Galaxy. We will be in charge of finding new places to get citizens out of the Ark and into homes. However, we will also be living with the consequences of having the other Arks fail, as well as conflicts already in progress from the other civilizations that pre-exist in Andromeda. We are human, but we are aliens. We once defended humanity for invasion but now we are the invaders and we are the ones who are simply trying to make humanity survive but unfortunately through any means possible that is everything in my mind that i can think up with the latest ea play trailer for mass Effect andromeda what do you think is there anything i missed is there anything more you can add or something that just doesn't add up let me know in the comment section below like if you like, or if you don't, send your feedback in the comments as well. In any case, I hope you enjoyed my breakdown. I'm done, and I'm spent, and I'm tired, and there's more E3 to be had. So, I will see you next time. This is Commander Shepard, signing off.